actually 55 separate components that needed to be mobilised between Geraldton and the Agnew mine site. Um, that process took between 10 and 12 hours for each journey and took eight days overall. The road trains for the, uh, the turbine blades were 77 metres in length. Um, so if you think of a normal road train, that's a little bit longer than your average road train. Uh, and that's what required all the special manoeuvring, particularly given that they don't bend in the middle. I had the opportunity to um, see them passing through the town of Mount Magnum. Um, and on the journey, they had to make a right-hand turn at Mount Magnum, but there wasn't space in the main road at Mount Magnum for them to turn right. They actually had to build a new road around the outside of the town so that they could do a big left-hand loop and then come back through the middle of town. But it was uh, impressive to see how they'd move those around. The challenge and scale of the actual installation of the wind turbines um, is fairly enormous. Each turbine uh, has a foundation containing 50 tonnes of steel and 500 tonnes of concrete. That had to be poured in one continuous pour of 85 trucks um, and they have to get it exactly right. If, if the concrete doesn't all go in, there's something missing down the bottom and they have to, have to fix that quickly. Um, uh, it was a really interesting process to see. For the wind turbines themselves, each of the tower sections weighs between 50 and 100 tonnes, um, with the lower sections weighing uh, more, around 100 tonnes. And then the nacelle and the turbine itself, uh, that whole unit weighs uh, about 420 tonnes, sitting 110 metres off the ground, spinning around, so it's a, a fair weight. For the installation, the weather is, is uh, a conundrum that you have, you're putting wind turbines up and the one thing you don't want when you're assembling them is wind. So it, it makes it a, an interesting exercise that you have to manage the installation and you have to manage lifting the blades when there's no wind, which uh, seems at odds with what you're trying to achieve in the outcome. So uh, it, it was interesting and that's why it took three or four days to assemble it a turbine, particularly when they were lifting the, the hub and the cell with the blades on. Yeah, so they just had to make sure the wind was below a certain speed and, and some of the lifts were at night, so yeah, to make that easier. One of the most challenging uh, parts of the whole process that we had was the, uh, the outbreak of COVID in the latter part of construction and commissioning. Um, and we actually ended up having two separate crews, one that was finalising construction whilst the other was um, commencing commissioning on the, the already constructed turbines. And these two crews weren't allowed to interact at all or have anything to do with each other. They had to stay and remain completely separate to manage uh, any risk of possible uh, uh, infection. The solar and the thermal were installed first and then the wind and battery came after. So we were actually operating the thermal station with the solar to start with before the wind was integrated. So yeah, it was quite interesting for our operations guys to be a part of that. It was a new load. Uh, we didn't know how load would react through, through uh, um, step changes in load, how those turbines, how all the integrated parts would, would work together. And I, and I guess working together is, is now the control system did a part of it, but then our guys had to do a fair bit of work to make sure that they would work together. It, it was an interesting exercise, and, and then for them to learn how all the components fitted together, what the interaction was of each of the components, how they all impacted the whole system. Um, a hybrid microgrid is uh, quite an interesting beast in, in that every component impacts it in some way. Uh, and you have to understand that on learn that. The recognition that the project gets, um, both within Australia and internationally, um, I think brings a, a really good um, uh, feeling to everyone in our business. Um, you know, we have a trophy cabinet that's filling up, um, and uh, not just from this project, but for some other projects as well. People who work here, work here because they enjoy working on these sort of projects, um, and I enjoy working for EDL and so it, it, it does add to the whole way and the whole culture of the business and the way people interact. It's, it's really, really beneficial.